Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the CSAFE 2020 All Hands meeting. Um, we're just getting started here. Alicia is going to kick us off and we'll see her presentation shortly. I guess it is time to go. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and uh, hopefully, uh, hold on a second, uh, everybody will get to see it. Why? Oh, there we go. Um, share screen. Oh, I don't have permission to share my screen. <laughs> Details, details. Are you? Alicia, I think um, Roger will work on that. It'll be just one second and he'll get you the permission to share your screen. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, I have permission to share my screen, Roger, thank you. All right, there we go. Can you guys see my screen then? We can. Can you go ahead and put it in um, presentation view and then we should be good to go. I can. There we go. Are we good? Perfect. Thank you. So uh, welcome everybody to our All Hands uh, 2020. I am Alicia Carriquiri. Uh, I'm a professor of statistics at Iowa State and the director of CSAFE. Um, the this is a tradition for us to have an all hands meeting sometime in the month of May. And uh, this of course is a very special one for us because um, for several reasons. Number one reason is that this is our last all hands meeting for CSAVE 1.0. And uh, we want to celebrate our accomplishments and um, thank a whole lot of people uh, for our successes. Uh, the other one is that uh, we are very happy to announce that CSAFE 2.0 is now a reality and will begin operating on June 1, 2020. In principle, we our funding will go through May 31st, 2025, so hopefully we'll be around for the next five years. Um, very much looking forward to working with, uh, to working with everybody. And the other uh, happy news we have is that uh, the CSAFE team has expanded and uh, we now include a sixth uh, academic partner. This is uh, West Virginia University that will join us uh, starting June 1. Um, we're very excited about the new partnership with West Virginia. Uh, they bring a dimension to CSAFE that we lacked which is uh, a very strong research program in forensic sciences. Uh, we, uh, I think this is going to be good all around uh, our uh, expertise in statistics and their expertise in forensic science research uh, is going to be, we hope, a very fruitful collaboration. We would have very much preferred to celebrate in person as we have done over the past several years, but of course uh, the COVID, uh, pandemic got in the way. Uh, and so here we are having our uh, virtual all hands meeting. Um, there's nothing to celebrate about COVID, that's for sure. But the one thing I can say um, in terms of our meeting is that by having it uh, uh, virtual, uh, it has enabled a whole lot of people to join us that would not have been able to join us in person. And uh, Harley uh, Judd uh, tells me that we have um, over 300 people signed up for today's uh, meeting. So that's definitely a record for us. And we're very excited about, um, about uh, chatting with all of you today. So looking back, uh, the, as I said, today we celebrate the continuation of CSAFE's work but we also uh, close uh, CSA 1.0 with a whole lot of pride. Um, we, I think we have made uh, some important inroads and achieved uh, uh, much, not only in terms of uh, research uh, 
research projects and research findings, but also in terms of um, uh, establishing very good relationships uh, with uh, many practitioners, uh, both in forensic science and the law, that have uh, strongly contributed to our successes in terms of research. Uh, so I'll say more uh, about that in a minute. Uh, we, have, uh, we have created a lot of resources, uh, for example, databases, uh, new methods that um, can be used that are in the public domain. So uh, can be used by the community of practitioners and by researchers in uh, just about any area. And we're very proud of that. Uh, this is one of the things we continue, we will continue to do during CSAFE 2.0. And uh, I think one of the most important things is that through meetings like this and through other types of events like webinars and um, training workshops and such, uh, we have enabled interaction between practitioners, legal professionals, scientists, including statisticians, in a wide range of disciplines and around problems in forensic science. So uh, I think that um, one of the things we have done reasonably well is bring together a diverse group of uh, uh, communities with a common interest in uh, uh, forensic science. We uh, are very proud of uh, the relationships we have established. So after CSAFE 2.0 was announced, I had a chance to speak with a whole lot of reporters uh, some of them are uh, with varying degrees of success, I must say. Some of them are only interested in uh, catchy titles or headlines, but uh, the, the message I have tried to convey to all of them is that the thing I'm most proud of, myself personally, as director of CSAFE, is the bridges we have managed to build between uh, us academics and the, um, and the communities of forensic and legal professionals. Uh, we would have been nowhere in terms of our work without those strong relationships. And uh, there's no way we could have uh, accomplished our mission of developing tools and methods that are useful uh, for the practice of forensic uh, science. So um, we, we like to say, in fact, this is, uh, we should call this our motto, uh, mission-driven research because the research that we carry out um, is always looking towards uh, the eventual application of the methods. So um, we, uh, we are very, very proud of those relationships and uh, we hope to expand them and maintain them. There's a whole lot of people to uh, be grateful to uh, for the things we have achieved. Um, First of all, I'd like to mention uh, Dr. Rich Kavana and uh, Sub, Ms. Subalu, both of them from NIST, both blissfully retired. I hope uh, it would be great if they could have joined us today, but I doubt they have. Uh, and uh, I hope they're enjoying their retirement somewhere warm. Um, they have been such good resources for us, uh, both uh, Rich and Sue were extraordinarily effective mentors when we were trying to get the center started. Uh, and they supported us uh, unquestionably over the last five years. We're extraordinarily grateful to them. Um, there's many colleagues at NIST, I uh, won't name names, uh, but you know who you are, uh, from whom we have learned a whole lot. And uh, we very much look forward to working with uh, those colleagues for the next five years, hopefully um, in closer type of uh, collaborations. I can't, uh, it would be negligent of me not to thank Iowa State University. Um, the Iowa State took it seriously when we became the headquarters for CSAFE. They have provided tremendous support and very significant resources, starting with uh, very excellent space for CSAFE uh, here on in the middle of campus and uh, other uh, many resources. So we're very grateful to Iowa State for, um, for embracing CSAFE. Uh, and finally, the forensics and the legal professionals with whom we've been working over the last five years. Um, 
we have learned it was a learning curve for all of us uh, some of us had little forensics uh, background and so we have learned a lot uh, over the past five years um, and uh, you have helped us do our job much better in fact you have helped us do our job so we're very grateful for that there's new leadership at NIST. Uh, Dr. Shia, uh, Shiam Sunder uh, is the acting director of the Special Programs Office. Uh, he stepped in for Rich Kavanaugh. And uh, Mr. Robert Ramatowski, the Forensic Science Research Program Manager with whom we work directly. Um, we, we are uh, very grateful that they will be uh, supporting us uh, from NIST. And we very much look forward to working with both of them uh, in CSAFE 2.0. Um, I was going to add another slide, and I forgot, uh, that said that the plan for today uh, is um, each area is going, each research area is going to um, show a bit of uh, what was accomplished in CSAFE uh, 1.0 and the plans for CSAFE 2.0. And every one of the uh, leaders uh, today that will make the presentations has been asked to think about uh, what is it that we would like to ask the forensics and the legal communities for? Uh, where do we think there would be place for collaboration? Um, you know, the type of, uh, the type of relationships we're envision for, envisioning for CSAFE 2.0 and hopefully lots of you will uh, jump in. There will be uh, opportunities for questions and answers after each one of the presentations. Um, so uh, you can use either the chat or the Q&A or, or raise your hand uh, in Zoom. And uh, a must for everybody is the, um, the, web, the presentation that we will uh, hear from uh, Lynn Garcia from the Texas Forensic Science Commun uh, Commission. She has gracefully uh, agreed to give our um, uh, you know big talk uh, to welcome CSAFE 2.0 and we very much look forward to that presentation. So without further ado I am going to pass it on to Robert Ramatowski who would like to say a couple of words and um, for the rest of you just enjoy the meeting uh, don't be shy and ask questions and please 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 connect with us either through www.forensicstats.org or through my personal email at alicia at iastate.edu. And I look forward to um, the rest of the presentations today. Thank you so much. Let's see, now I need to stop share, right? Yeah, thank you, Alicia. We no longer see your presentation. We'll move on to our next presentation, which is from Robert Ramatowski from um, NIST. And as Alicia said, while Robert's loading up his presentation, we are using the Zoom. Are you using slides today, Robert? Uh, no, I'm just gonna go off. Oh. The okay, okay, that's fine too. Um, before we get started, I just wanna remind everyone, as Alicia said, we are using the um, webinar function of Zoom. So today's questions um, will be answered through the raise your hand function, which can be found at the bottom of your screen. If you hover over the bottom of your screen, a number of options should come up. So if you raise your hand, we will um, unmute you and um, have you ask your question. Otherwise, you are um, welcome to use the chat if you would like, but um, probably the raise hand function is the best. So without further ado, um, go ahead, Robert. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Robert Ramatowski, and as Alicia mentioned, I'm the new uh, Forensic Science Program Manager here at NIST. I recently took over the position, as Alicia mentioned, when uh, Sue Ballou retired uh, at the end of this past March, uh, not too long ago. Um, just wanted to let people know that NIST has had a long tradition of working with practitioners and conducting uh, forensic research going back all the way to the 1920s. Dr. Wilmer Souter, who was a physicist at NIST, then known as the National Bureau of Standards, was a pioneer in several different forensic fields, including uh, areas like handwriting and typewriting analysis, as well as ballistics. Um, that tradition has carried on uh, for several decades at NIST, including in the early 1970s, um, 
when the National Bureaus of Standards established the Law Enforcement Standard Laboratory. Uh, this entity eventually became known as the Office of Law Enforcement Standards, or OLIS, as a lot of people recognize that acronym, uh, back in 1991. In 2011, NIST moved the Office of Law Enforcement Standards to uh, the Office of Special Programs underneath the Associate Director for Laboratory Programs to basically better um, coordinate all the forensic science research that was being done across the many different laboratories on our NIST campuses. Overall, the Special Programs Office at NIST also works with uh, the Department of Justice, uh, National Institutes of uh, Justice on things like human factors, evidence management, and process mapping across several different forensic disciplines. Also, as a result of the work of the National Commission on Forensic Science, which ran from 2013 to 2017, NIST is also working on foundation re reviews in various forensic disciplines. These are kind of like deep dives into forensics, uh, each forensic discipline, looking at literature reviews and, and various other topics and determining the state of the art, basically, for each of these disciplines. Uh, the Forensic Science Research Program now oversees internal research at NIST uh, in seven different focus areas. Uh, these include things like firearms and associated tool marks, forensic genetics, uh, drugs, toxins, trace, statistics, digital evidence, and biometrics. And as most of you are aware as well, um, the Special Programs Office also hosts the um, OSAC office as well which coordinates standards across many different, um, some 25 different subcommittees uh, within its organization. Uh, you can find more information about all of these topics on our website, uh, which is uh, www.nist.gov slash topics slash forensic dash science. So part of my role as forensic science program manager is to work with CSAFE and oversee the kind of technical content of the new cooperative agreement that was just signed. Uh, this would be in cooperation with several different advisory boards that have been set up. Uh, these boards include the Strategic Advisory Board and the Research and Technology Advisory Board. And these were basically created to oversee project selection uh, and evaluation, as well as monitoring projects uh, as they go throughout the five-year life cycle of this renewal process. In particular, the latter advisory board is composed of a wide range of experts, including practitioners, laboratory chiefs and directors, private consultants, and uh, defense and prosecuting attorneys. Um, NIST researchers and experts will also serve alongside these various outside experts to help uh, coordinate all the different moving parts that is CSAFE 2.0. Uh, there have been a number of changes implemented in this new uh, CSAFE 2.0 agreement. And I'm looking forward to working with Alicia and all the other researchers that are part of this organization and uh, wish them all the success in the next five years. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, we'll now pause for um, any questions that our audience members might have for Alicia or for Robert. And um, after that short question period, we will move to our next um, presentation, which is a research focused presentation. Harley, Roger, can you confirm if there are any questions coming through, any raised hands? There is a raised hand from Gerald Laporte, but uh, he's not responding to his question, or he's not in Umbia saying his question. Okay. We'll give Jerry just one more minute, and if we don't hear from him, we'll move on. Oh, he doesn't have a question. Okay. <laughs> So put your hand down. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's a question from Carlos Galindo. Juan Carlos, oh no. So Juan Carlos Castro, do you have a question? I don't think he meant to do, he meant okay. 
Yeah. Um, seeing none, we'll move on to our first research um, area presentation. I believe the first presentation is from Dr. Heike Hoffman from Iowa State University, um, presenting on firearms and tool marks research. Um, as Alicia mentioned, each of these presentations will go over a little bit about the highlights and accomplishments from CSAFE 1.0 and talk about our plans for CSAFE 2.0 and how the community can be um, engaged and involved as much as they would like in CSAFE research initiatives. Thanks, Stacy. If I could get the right to share my screen. Sure. Is, is it coming through now, Heike? Not yet. Now, okay. So let me just quickly pull up my slides. 